Good morning, kindergarten. Our story this week is another story about Moses, um, but this story is after he was all grown up and he was at the palace, and this story is called Working Together. So you can see Moses is all grown up now and he's at the palace with the princess and the pharaoh, and we're going to see what this story is about. When Moses was about 12 years old, he went to live in the palace with the princess. He learned many things that would make him a good leader, but he also learned about the many different gods that the princess worshipped. Moses refused to worship these gods. He would only worship the God of heaven that his mother had taught him about. As an adult, Moses learned that Pharaoh was very unkind to God's people, the Israelites. Pharaoh made the Israelites work hard as slaves. It made Moses angry to see people treated so harshly. Moses became so upset that he left the palace and went far away from Pharaoh. Moses went to a place called Midian. There he became a shepherd and he learned how to take care of sheep. Instead of learning how to fight and lead an army, Moses learned how to lead and care for little lambs. Instead of learning about many different gods, Moses had time to pray to the one true God. One day, Moses was taking care of the sheep when he saw a strange sight. He saw a bush that looked like it was on fire, but the bush did not burn up. Moses went closer to look at this bush. As Moses got closer, God started talking to Moses. God told Moses that Pharaoh had been very mean to the Israelites. God told Moses to go tell the king that God's people needed to leave Egypt. God had chosen Moses to help lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Uh, 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 I can't do that, Moses said. I don't speak well in front of other people. Pharaoh isn't going to listen to me. God told Moses that he would be with him, and he would help him speak. But Moses was still afraid. So God told Moses that his brother Aaron would help him talk to Pharaoh. Finally, Moses and Aaron went to see Pharaoh. Our God says to let his people go free, Moses and Aaron told Pharaoh. But Pharaoh just laughed. I don't even know your God. It made Pharaoh very angry to think that Moses would take the people away from all of the work that they did for Pharaoh. So Pharaoh said, no, they cannot go. They can stay here and work even harder. Moses and Aaron talked to Pharaoh many times, but Pharaoh would not change his mind. He would not let God's people go. God allowed some bad things called plagues to happen only to Pharaoh and the Egyptians, but not to God's people. When Pharaoh saw how God was helping the Israelites, he finally decided the Israelites could go. Pharaoh told Moses and Aaron, leave my country, take your people and go away. The Israelites were happy 
and Moses was happy because his brother Aaron had helped him and they were now free to go. After traveling a short distance away from the city, a big cloud stopped in a valley near the Red Sea. This meant Moses and all of the people were to stop their traveling and rest. Fathers worked to put up tents for their family to sleep in for the night. Mothers built a small fire to bake some bread to have with their supper. As the evening got darker and cooler, the bright white cloud began to look like a cloud of fire. The cloud will help to keep us warm in the evening and it will give us light to see. The mothers told their children, God is good to us. The children told their parents, in Egypt. Pharaoh was beginning to wonder why he had let the Israelites go. Who's going to do all our work for us? His helpers asked. Who is going to build our cities? I never should have let them go, the king said. Hurry, go and get my chariot and my soldiers. Let's go get them. So Pharaoh gathered his army together and chased after the Israelites. When the Israelites saw Pharaoh's army coming to get them, they were very afraid. There was nowhere they could go. They were trapped between Pharaoh's army and the Red Sea. The Israelites forgot how good God had been to them. They forgot how close God was to them. Moses, they cried, why did you bring us out here? They complained. They were sure that Pharaoh's army was going to get them and take them back to Egypt. Don't be afraid, Moses said. Just watch and see how God will take care of us. God told Moses to walk to the edge of the sea and hold his walking stick out over the water. When Moses did that, God sent a strong wind to blow the water back out of the way. As the wind blew, the water parted and a dry path was made in front of them. The wind held the water back like a great big wall. Quickly, the Israelites and all of their sheep, their camels, their donkeys, and their cows began to cross through the Red Sea. They walked until everyone was across to the other side safely. Then, Pharaoh and his army started chasing the Israelites through the Red Sea. But God was still taking care of his people. He made the wheels fall off of the Egyptians' chariots. After all of the Israelites were safely on the other side of the Red Sea, God told Moses to hold out his walking stick over the water again. This time, the wind stopped. It stopped blowing and the water in the Red Sea flowed right back together again, splashing down on top of all of Pharaoh's army. 
the Israelites would never have to worry about Pharaoh and his army again. God had taken care of his people. When the Israelites saw how God had taken care of them, they began to sing and dance and clap their hands. They praised God and celebrated together. Miriam, Moses' sister, helped the Israelites sing a thank you song to God for taking such good care of them. The Israelites celebrated because they knew that God was good. He had taken care of them in a special way. The Bible tells us, Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Celebrate his wonderful name. That's found in Psalms 135, verse 3. We can celebrate together because God is good to us, too. Just like God took care of Moses and all of the children of Israel a long time ago, God will take care of us, too. Okay, now I'm going to go back through this story. I'm going to show you the pictures. And I'm going to see if you can remember this story was a longer story. So there are lots of pictures to think about. But I'm going to show you the picture. And I want you to see if you can tell the story to the people that you are with with your family. Here is the very first picture in the story. Who is this man that's in it right in the middle? Where is he at? Who are the other people in the picture, do you think? This picture looks very different from the first picture. It's the same man, but he's in a different place and he's doing a different job. Can you tell your family, who is this man? Where is he at now? What special job is he doing now? What is he learning to do differently than he did when he lived in Egypt? Here is the same man again. What's happening now? Why do you think Moses is surprised? What did God tell him to do? This picture, Moses is talking to someone else. Who is this? Why do you think Moses looks like he is so happy to see this man? What are Moses and Aaron doing in this picture?
where are Moses and Aaron now? What are they doing? What did Pharaoh think when they told him that God wanted him to let the children of Israel go? What happened next? Why does Pharaoh look so angry? Why do you think the other Egyptian people in the background look upset? finally happened. After the children of Israel were gone, what did Pharaoh decide? When the children of Israel were gone from Egypt, what did they do when they saw that Pharaoh had decided to come after them? What did Moses tell them? What did God tell Moses to do? What did God do? What happened when the wind began to blow? What's happening now? What do you think you might have seen or heard or felt if you had been there walking through the Red Sea with the children of Israel? What happened to Pharaoh and his army after the children of Israel got safely through the water? What did the children of Israel do when they realized that God had taken care of them and they would not have to go back to Egypt and they would never see Pharaoh and his army again.
What can you celebrate today? What has Jesus done for you? Take some time with your family to talk about the blessings God has given you and how God has taken care of you. What can we celebrate every day? The Bible says to count our blessings and to praise the Lord. And remember our Bible verse in Psalms 135, three says, praise the Lord for the Lord is good. Celebrate his wonderful name. 